You're listening to the Autism Weekly Podcast. Each week we share community voices and bring light to stories that increase awareness, acceptance, equity, access, and inclusion. If you haven't already, subscribe to join the Autism Weekly family. I'm your host, Jeff Skibitsky. This week, we're joined by Carrie Lentner. Carrie is a board-certified behavior analyst who has been working with ABS kids for two years and serving as an assistant director for almost five months. Carrie's journey in the field of ABA and autism started about eight years ago. This is when she was living in New York. In this episode, Carrie shares her experience of working in the field and seeing the progress of her clients and learning new skills herself. We'll discuss all these skills that Carrie developed as a behavior technician and how they can help anyone in their other careers or in their personal life or in other settings. Carrie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. And, you know, this is a topic, oftentimes we talk about how hard the job is of behavior technician, but sometimes we don't really go into all of the byproducts of the skills and just personal qualities that you learn while on the job or are forced to kind of really think about being aware about. But before we go there, um, one thing I'd love to be able to do is give the audience a chance to know a little bit about your journey. So, what led you to the field of care and autism? Yeah, so I um, actually started my college career as a nursing major originally, and something just didn't fit. It didn't click. I wanted to love it, and there was just a, a missing piece there. Um, so I actually switched my major to psychology, kind of a little bit more broader of the field to figure out what do I want to do here? Um, and so I started as my first job in a school with individuals with different um, disabilities, um, CP, autism, ADHD, epilepsy, a little bit of everything. And starting as a, a assistant in that classroom in a school environment was just so eye-opening to not only, you know, different types of disabilities and abilities of our clients and kiddos, but the the job itself and the preparation that goes into it and the day-to-day, -day, you know, support and care that that we give and provide. And it was just so rewarding to see, um, you know, progress being made and skills being met, goals being achieved, and those little moments in between where, you know, we have good days and bad days, but those good moments and those, you know, successful things really just take away the the hard challenges. And and mm -hmm. I loved it. No, certainly. And, and I mean, just starting out in the with the idea that you're going to be going into nursing is that obviously in your in your heart of hearts is that service and being able to give back to others and contribute probably was one of the driving factors for every decision that you've made. But within the field of nursing, when you went through that process, do you see do you see differences in the way that that you envision the world of, of empowering somebody else to to either achieve a goal or to be able to take on new challenges or to be aware of things? Do you see that as something that carries over from different service fields? Oh, absolutely. And I think one of the things that popped into my head as you were speaking was just bedside manner kind of as a general scope, whether we are a nurse in a, you know, hospital facility, whether we are a teacher in a classroom, a BCBA in the clinic, a mom, a dad getting this information, that bedside manner and our approach is so, so important. Knowing that, you know, the person who is talking to you about your care, your child's care, their health, their well being, knowing that that person actually cares and, you know, they're not reading from a script, they're not doing this just, just because it's a job. They care, it's meaningful, they're compassionate. And I think that really just, it shows when you have that. Yeah, I mean, as, as you kind of talk through all those qualities and the way that somebody's mindset must be when they're approaching the career, it's there's a difference in the view of somebody who says, you know, I'm out there treating versus I'm out there serving. And I think that the mentality that you're sharing right now is one of, you know, I'm, I'm there to service my clients, service their family. I'm there to help 
somebody achieve their goals. Um, what is it that you think that as far as your experience working with autistic individuals and their families, what is it that that you've learned about yourself through that process of being more of a of a service oriented versus an academic? This is my job. This is the science, but more of like, you know, how do I immerse what the family needs into care? Yeah, I think that is goes so hard into active listening. We have to listen to these families. We have to put ourselves in their shoes. What is their perspective? You know, what have they kind of been told from the beginning of the diagnosis to what are real reality? What is, you know, realistic expectations? What are what is my child truly going to be capable of? And I think, you know, I love coming in and seeing, let's see what they're capable of. Let's, you know, test those boundaries, test some limits. And when we get pushback, then we adapt and we change how, you know, our approach to things. But we have to kind of take an, a bigger eye approach of, you know, what is what is this family's expectations, their long-term goals? What would what do they want to see for their child and how can we support and get them there? For these skills, I mean, you've mentioned uh, empathy, compassion, um, the active listening. Are these skills that I mean, are taught in your in your program? I guess start with what is the educational background you have to have to become a BT? And then are these skills that are taught or are they fostered? Yeah, I think um, so. My background, I have my bachelor's in psychology, and then I pursued my master's in ABA and autism. And that in itself is a whirlwind. You have to get almost, you know, 2000 experience hours of working with individuals, being supervised, getting feedback, learning these, you know, soft skills, whether they are taught in a classroom, maybe not so much the soft skills side, but from your coworkers and your peers and mentors, supervisors. I think that personal level of being able to learn and collaborate and see how people, you know, really have these hard conversations, really interact with our families. It's not something that we can necessarily learn in a classroom. And for me, my master's program was all online. So having, you know, great mentors and great supervisors really led by example. When we're talking about some of these skills that you walk away with, and that you learn from doing a career or engaging in a career path that requires empathy, compassion, listening. These are all leadership skills. These are all skills that no matter where I take, no matter what I do, is that they are going to have a huge benefit. We're not living in a world anymore where it's top down, you do this or you're going to be fired. I mean, it doesn't work like that's not the way that you manage people. That's not the way you engage people. Um, your relationships will definitely sour if that's the way you approach it. So these are skills that have to be taught. They have to be really looked at and fostered. How how did they do that? How did when you were going through that process as a behavior technician, how did they remove the complete kind of following the script and really start enhancing the thinking through it and the feelings that might be felt by a family or by a participant in your in your care. Yeah, and I think something that really is so important and a skill that, you know, us BTs are taking into consideration every day is we have to read something, whether it's, you know, a textual program, whether it's a program that a BA wrote and an RBT is now implementing, and we need to be able to not only read and interpret it, but we have to apply it in a sense that is not, you know, we're not down talking to a parent. We are not belittling as we are providing supervision. I think having a lot of hands on and being part of, you know, open communication and saying, hey, how do you navigate those difficult conversations? Okay, well, let's look. What is our 
what's our outcome that we're looking for here? What is the purpose? What are we trying to solve? Okay, what is the parent's agenda and their point of view? What is our agenda and our point of view? And how can we mesh and come together to meet in the middle and get everyone's needs met, all parties? And I think that the the ability to be able to take in a lot of different perspectives is probably another layer of skill building. Um, I remember when I kind of think back of my history, and I'll even go pre working in this field, is that um, I was I was in the Peace Corps, and while I was there, it's I'm in a place where I was the only English speaker um, for many a miles. Um, culturally, it was not something that I was attuned to. So I didn't know what others were feeling, thinking, experiencing because it was so different than my life. And when I take those skills and apply it to what I did clinically, it was, I can't just go in and tell people what they need to do. I need to sit back, listen to where priorities are, where somebody's passion and skills lie, and figure out how to work as a group and collaborate to get somebody to their goals and figure out what are the barriers? What are the things that are preventing the success that somebody's looking for? When you think about kind of your role as far as going from BT to behavior analyst, and then think about it going in the future, because you're obviously going to be a leader in this field and you already took that step as an assistant director. What are the things that you kind of learned throughout time that made you stronger through that process to be able to say, you know what, I'm not just learning behavior analytics skills. I'm learning skills that are making me a well-rounded contributor, no matter what field I'm in. And just as a person as a whole, you know, whether it's I'm applying it to these skills, I'm applying to, you know, my working relationships or my own personal life relationships. I think one of the biggest things is that perspective taking, having, you know, that patience and enjoying the little things. Everything is, you know, a teachable moment, whether we are learning someone else's communication style, whether we are learning their point of view and their background as to why that's their point of view. What are, you know, what makes their experience different than our experience? And just because it's different doesn't mean that it's good or it's bad. It's just different. And we can learn from each other's ex different experiences. I think one of the hardest parts too with that is, you know, making sure that we have an open mindset and that our own personal thoughts and feelings and expectations, ideas of what should be, we kind of have to put to the side and know that, you know, our families and parents and communities are are doing their best with the knowledge, the resources, the support that they have. So taking ourselves, you know, personally out of that equation, and I may feel strongly about a conversation I'm having with a parent, but based on, you know, their thoughts and feelings, I need to put my strong expectations to the side and change my perspective based on their perspective. And that is not always the easiest thing to do by any means. No, it's not. And I mean, it also takes humility and another skill. I mean, you, you start kind of tackling all these skills that come about just by experiencing this job and this profession. And it's, it's mind boggling as far as like, wow, you know, I, I'm kind of having to learn all this. And hopefully I got the right supports to help me get there. But these are the things that I'm walking away with. Um, I'm going to I'm going to make you and maybe challenge you a little bit here is that um, we talk about, you know, the skills that you learn on the job by by being a part of that service team. I think that there's also things that I have learned specifically from those that I have been a part of their team. So part of that. Uh, care model and whether it is the ability to kind of take a, a different viewpoint or conceptualize something different is that some of the some of the autistics that I've worked with have done a wonderful job of being able to kind of make me and challenge me to say, you know, 
my way of thinking is not the only way that's going to be accurate here. I need to be able to broaden the way that I'm seeing the world to be able to do that. Sometimes it's the directness that I see from somebody. And it's like, wow, you know, I need to be able to take that approach to be able to be more direct. Um, and sometimes you see it in the compassion and in the way that somebody is feeling and experiencing the world. What are some of the experiences that you've had with some of your clients that have strengthened you as, as a person throughout this time? Oh my goodness, I could name so many. One of the um, first clients that I kind of worked with outside of just a school setting, her um, family, this was back in New York, her family knew that I was a TA in her classroom, um, you know, a preferred staff of hers. And they actually reached out through the school and were looking for someone to do one-on-one -on -one respite in their home and out in the community with their daughter. And they asked for me. And that opened not only an amazing experience of, you know, okay, now I get to work with this individual in so many different environments. How can we generalize skills that we're working on in the classroom to going to a restaurant and ordering food versus sitting in a car and remaining safe? Versus um, learning to, we worked on laundry and how to do dishes and making a bed. And so I think one of um, her just as a person, as a whole, really just taught me, you know, my, my perspective is kind of small in a sense of just my world and how I do things and being able to, you know, go with her and going to different social events, going to a trampoline park, going to a regular park outside. I was really able to see the challenges that, you know, her parents face when bringing her in the community, bringing her to the grocery store and seeing their perspective of why these things are hard now that I was firsthand experiencing it. And it, those challenges some days were were hard and they were rough but you know those patient my patience and realizing that okay one rough day doesn't mean every rough day and mm -hmm. just because things are hard right now we're working towards a greater good so how can we get through this hump work through this dilemma this problem and know that on the other side we're going to be successful mm -hmm, absolutely and i mean the idea of being self-aware and being able to have some form of self-evaluation, I think, comes from the same process as well, is that as I as I've worked in the field is that I've seen people that have challenged themselves. They said is that, you know, I have this barrier. I want to work on this and I want to be able to pursue and figure out ways to navigate the world around me to be successful, even though this barrier existed. I have those barriers. I'm sure that I'm sure that you have those barriers. And it's the field of behavior analysis helps you to sometimes take a step back and evaluate and say, okay, so what's what is the what's the the cause? What is the the function of why I'm doing what I'm doing on a regular basis? And is there any ways to modify that? Are there other things from the field itself that you see trickling over? to other job sets or to life skills um, that are so important in the way that we're navigating. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things is changing our approach, you know, being able to multitask, think on our feet and change our approach. If something that we are doing, whether that is a conversation with a peer, a friend, a parent, if what we're doing is not clicking, is not being able to, you know, come up with a conflict resolution, then obviously my approach needs to change, whether it's my tone of voice, whether it's my point of view, whether it's my delivery, something I'm doing is not working. What needs to be changed? Because if, you know, if we're working with a client, for example, and I write this amazing program, I'm like, this is flawless, this is perfect. And then it goes to implementation and it's not working. Well, I know that the client can be successful. I know that they have, you know, foundational skills. I know the prerequisites. So my approach is not making them be 
able to be successful. So how can we change, adapt, modify? Again, that perspective taking to, to really see what works and what doesn't work. And that's that's both in treatment and in being able to manage and create future leaders. Um, the, the the field of ABA is like seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. So of course we've all seen those people who have kind of gone through the process of starting out doing uh, behavior technician work and then moving into becoming a behavior analyst. And now that are guiding the field, whether it's in research or in theory or in practice or in business. But there's also those that took those skills and maybe even didn't stay within the field that are leading other types of organizations and businesses or schools or is there something that you'd be talking to a behavior technician that's you know they're exploring is this something for me where you'd be saying even if you walk away saying i don't want to be a behavior analyst my entire life which yep. some people go through and have a job change. You did with nursing, like that happens. What would you be telling them? You are going to walk away with, if you were to label four or five skills, you're gonna walk away with these skills minimally that are going to empower you in everything that you do. What would, what would, those, what would that conversation look like? I think one of the most important ones is, is teamwork, working on a team, whether that is you are the leader of that team or you know, you're know you at the bottom of that team. You have to be able to work together and know what I am doing is, is part of the greater good, whether I am making the policies or I'm implementing them. If I'm implementing those policies, then I'm able to get feedback, know firsthand what's working, what doesn't. And as a member of that team, hopefully you have the availability and the communication that you can go to, you know, the next member of your team who might be a little bit higher and say, hey, there's some flaws with this and be able to provide that feedback. I think another um, really important skill is communication styles. We all interpret things differently. We all, you know, talk in different ways, whether it is tone of voice, whether, you know, if we're looking at the DISC personality styles, are we looking for the what, the why, the how? What are, you know, how are we going to make sure that our message, whomever we're talking to, gets across so that my point gets across the way it should be and that they are also able to interpret it without any misjudgment, miscommunication, misinformation. Um, yeah, I think communication is, you know, being able to know who you're talking to and how to talk with them is so important in any job that you have. Absolutely. Uh, there's, there's, no, there's no doubt that being able to communicate effectively is it's not just something that's going to benefit you, but it's something that if you don't learn that skill is that it's going to keep you from being able to be successful. And then that's that's relationships. That's professional life. That's every walk of life is that if you don't develop that skill. So, Carrie, as, I, as I've been listening to all these things that you put out there, we, we, we talked about active listening. We've talked about compassion. We've talked about conflict resolution. We talked about problem solving, perspective taking, teamwork, self-awareness, communication styles. We've hit on so many skill sets. Would you have imagined when you were coming in as a BT that this is what you're walking away with? And I mean, ultimately, you turned it into a career path. But would you, did anybody ever sit down and be like, all right, so this is this is what we're going to be teaching you. This is what you're going to to learn on this job from from day one. This is what's being fostered. Has this ever clarified? Not in that sense, no. It was, you know, our our trainings and our, you know, new hire orientations are always really based on, you know, these are job expectations, these are requirements, these are, you know, physical skills that you need to have and physical things that you will be doing. But I think that mental component is not expressed as much as you realize and kind of like you said you know when i first started in this field i was barely 19 and i was you know a college kid and trying to 
think I knew everything about the world. I'm going to move out on my own. I can have my own apartment. I can pay all my own bills. And I think not only the job itself, but working with others, for others, caring for others, really just put so many things into perspective that there is so much more to the world than just my world. And realizing to open my eyes, open my doors, and just be accepting of all of the unknown lessons I'm going to learn, skills I'm going to gain. We're looking back, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. Well, Carrie, I appreciate the fact that you've been able to kind of take us through this journey because oftentimes we talk about coming into this field that this is going to be one of the hardest jobs you'll ever do that you're going to love with a passion. And that's true, but it's it's kind of defaulting to intrinsically you're doing this because you're carrier oriented, you're service oriented. Putting it out there that, you know, you are actually going to be walking away with a variety of skill sets is something that maybe we need to be talking about more and more frequently because the abilities that that folks learned on the job working in behavior analytic fields, and in this case, we're talking about working within the field of autism, is we just counted them out. It's it's it, it's just so many as far as enumerating them through. It's skills that are going to take you and advance you through so many career paths. And I think that that's something we need to be talking about more is what do we learn from those that we serve? What do we learn from those who we serve with? And what do we learn about ourselves that we can strengthen in that process? So if you were to go back and talk to Carrie from, gosh, uh, well, well, we're not going to put a date to it, but Carrie from when we started our career path, what is it that you would be telling yourself as far as, you know, go in with your eyes wide open because you're going to be able to achieve certain things? What would you tell yourself now? That's a that's a big question. That's a lot to put thought into. I think just, you know, be patient. Be patient with yourself, with your clients, with your coworkers, with, you know, your families. Give yourself the the room to grow and to make mistakes and accept feedback and learn from those around you who have been in this field for, you know, years longer than you to also learn, you know, that parents have it rough in, you know, sometimes in our field with the families that we're serving and being able to just acknowledge and accept and support them, letting them know, you know, I'm a ear to listen to, I'm an eye that's going to watch out for you, I'm a mouth that's going to advocate for you, and I'm I'm part of your team. That is, it's amazing. And to know that, you know, our families appreciate all of the things that we do. I think I think young Carrie would be very proud of of where this journey has taken us and where I think it will continue to take me. I think, you know, as an AD now, I am learning additional parts of this job. I'm learning additional things about myself, about working now as a higher part of a team, as a different part of a team on multiple teams with, you know, having BAs under me and their families and their BTs and their clients being responsible for the well-being of of so many people and their treatment is, it's a lot, but it's worth it. Absolutely. And I mean, when you talk about all those skills and you talk about the things that you'd be telling your younger self, um, I don't think that this is specific to necessarily the um, the autism field. But what we talk about is the broadness of everything that we've gone through and the experience that we've developed. But if you go into the expectation of your employer and of those around you, that they will accept that we are all fallible. They will 
demonstrate compassion around our challenging times. And this is what the family should be looking for. This is what the recipients of care should be looking for. And that the idea of empathy and understanding that we're coming from different approaches is something that should be universal is that you walk away with those core skill sets and, and you go into a job and you're looking for the culture that's built that and that is, is looking to be able to develop those skill sets, I think it's a win. And so thank you for laying all that out for us, Carrie. And, and thank you for coming on and sharing your experience with us today on the podcast. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And this discussion just really got my brain thinking, my feelings all over and, you know, a lot of reflection on where I've been, where I am and where I want to go in support of this this field as a whole. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you for listening to Autism Weekly. We hope you tune back in next week to learn more about autism in the real world. Autism Weekly is now found on all the major listening apps, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon Music, and more. Subscribe to be notified when we post a new podcast. Autism Weekly is produced by ABS Kids. ABS Kids is proud to provide diagnostic assessments and ABA therapy to children with developmental delays like autism spectrum disorder. You can learn more about ABS Kids and the Autism Weekly podcast by visiting abskids.com. Thanks for tuning in. See you again next week.